Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Um, today we're going to have a look at forms um, and form validation with React Hook Form. So um, I thought it'd be good to quickly look into how it's done just with standard React uh, and kind of see what the, the shortcomings are there and then see why you know we, re we need uh, React Hook Form at all and then basically replace it with React Hook Form and look at the look at the differences. So um, yeah, let's let's get into it. Um, I've got a very simple uh, application here. Um, so this is just, I've just created it using Create React App. I've updated this CSS uh, and I've updated the app.js um, with a very simple form, which we can see here. So nothing special going on here. We've just got the submit, a um, couple of labels and inputs. Yeah, and that's, and then we have the submit button here. Spanish just for, um, for styling, nothing else. So what I thought is we could start off with um, basically imagine the state and validation with React and then we'll, we'll yeah, we'll, like I said, we'll replace it with uh, React to forms. Um, so yeah, well, let's, let's get right into it. And actually before, before we get started, it's probably worth noting if you're kind of new to, to all of this, that HTML has um, built in kind of validation props into the input element um, built in, right? So we could hit something like um, main length three and it's got stuff like, you know, we can pattern required these are all html kind of spec things um and these almost have you know pretty good good functionality um in that you know for you know, form and you know we enter we're filling out um, it kind of focuses on on the field but obviously we don't have any actual control over um how to display things like the error messages or we don't have control over or I guess we don't have feedback of the input, so we can't really do much with that. So di different browsers might display the error message differently. Um, they might also, uh, I don't know, they might not work at all. So uh, this is almost kind of the functionality we'd like. It's, you know, it's very clean and simple to, to pop in, but um, obviously that doesn't work. So let's look at how to, to basically do that with React. So um, the first thing that React recommends is to work with uh, essentially controlled components or controlled inputs. Um, and all that means is that we control these inputs from a value um, using essentially React state um, as the, the source of truth. So we're going to add in um, a piece of state called form data. So um, that's just going to default a few values, username, age, and remember, I think that's what I've called it, yeah. Uh, and then for each of these inputs, all we're going to say basically to make them controlled is, hey, your value is controlled by the form data, in this case, dot uh, will be the name here. Um, the name is quite important. Um, it's used in uh, various different places, and it's good for for debugging. So it's useful to have that. Um, and actually, the checkbox is I think it uses checked instead of value. So that's fine. If I you know if I put something in here, you can see that that's, that's working. Um, but obviously, we need a way to actually change these values. Now that you know, imagine the state in React, we need a way to update that state, which we don't have yet. And that's what. Um, React is complaining about that here, you know, saying we've got the value, but we need a non-change or, or, or change it. So, um, yeah, basically we need to add a, a non-change uh, function so we can pop that here. Um, and that's fine. And I always found this a bit annoying because I like to usually like to put the on-change up here as opposed to each line that works fine, but it doesn't get rid of this, this error. So, um, yeah, you can do it either way, I guess. Um, Anyways, so we've got the on change, and I'm going to paste in a snippet from earlier, which is something like this. This is very standard stuff. Uh, you can find it in the React docs. Um, so we're checking in this case. We've got checkbox, so we just want to make sure we take out the checked or the value depending on the, the type of input, and then we're just setting the state. Um, and once we've got that, we can now, um, yeah, pop in values, and on this submit via function, we're just going to log. Uh, event dot well actually no we don't need to, to touch the event at all so we can just do data straight away um because we've got that in the state so hit that oops these these ah, of course um we need the event because we need to prevent the default behavior of html which is to to do this kind of weird um http request so now submit won't won't do that but it will keep the rest of the functionality we've got. So there we go. Um, so now we've got the state. We can, yeah, we can see how we can easily add some validation here. So I'm just gonna add a validate method. Uh, let's, I'm gonna pass through the data here. Um, and what we're gonna do is, yeah, the validate method, I'll just make it return a, a Boolean. 
Um, so if it's valid, uh, then we can log the data. Otherwise, we'll um, yeah, we'll just log something else invalid. Cool. There we go. Um, so let's create this uh, this function. Yep. And what we want to do is let's just say if. So in this case, I'm just going to validate the username. So we'll take the username and we'll just return username. Let's make sure it's not empty and the username, let's just give it a minimum length. A length is more than uh, three. So now um, if we try to submit, it's going to say invalid down here, still invalid until we have a valid, um, yeah, some valid data. So that's kind of the start of that. Um, and yeah, typically you might want to, you might want to show an error as well, right? Um, down here. So for that, now we need to add a, uh, a new um, piece of state. So let's say, let's call this one errors, um, use state, and we'll just, we'll initialize that to an empty object. Um, and what we can do down here is just say, hey, oops, if um, there exists, so every time it's invalid, what we'll do is we'll add a, a key um, with the name um, to the object, and then we can just check for that. So basically, if errors.username exists, then we can add a, a tag saying, you know, username invalid or something like that. Um, so that's all working fine. And the final thing we need to do is in the validate method, um, what we'll do is we'll just do something like pop that into a variable. Um, and then if it's not valid, we can set errors. Um, and let's just do username is true. Else, yeah, we can um, remove the errors object. Obviously, this might not make too much sense with just the just the username. Um, but the idea is that if you were validating the entire form and you had you know multiple um, fields that could could error out, then yeah, something like this then starts to make a bit more sense. Uh, and we can return valid here. And now, hopefully, when we hit submit, we can see yeah, username is valid, invalid. Sorry, submit again until we have data right so we've added all this code we've done a bit of you know basic validation um, and you can see how the code is starting to build up here even with just validating the username and um, you know we might want to do other things and validate the other other fields uh, we might want to mimic the HTML functionality of hovering or focusing on the uh, element the first element that's aired etc um, that's basically the the issue we have here um, if you don't have that many validation rules etc this is absolutely fine um, Otherwise, yeah, this is where kind of React, React hook forms start to, to come in. So imagine basically taking all this functionality, um, imagine you've built it out with the focus, etc., and extracting it out um, into, a, into a library or a dependency, and that's basically what React hook, React hook forms does. So yeah, let's, let's have a look into how it works. So um, first thing we do is, um, yeah, so first thing you actually want to do is uh, npm install React hook forms, which I've already done. We're going to use the use form hook. Uh, this does take in options, but we're going to ignore them just for the time. Um, and this returns a few a few things. Um, the main ones we want to look at is handle submit and register. Um, so we're going to go down to the form. So the concept here is that we need to register all our inputs so that they're um, basically part of the use form kind of uh, validation and state management. So we want to take uh, these guys, which is the kind of controlled component and on change, and we just say um, ref. So we're adding a ref here, and that's going to point to the register function that we've just imported. Um, so just like that, they're all imported. And the second thing we want to do is the on submit. We want to wrap that with the other function provided by the use form, which is the handle submit. And um, one last thing is the on submit. When it gets wrapped to the handle submit, we can basically remove the prevent default and we can actually just call you know, use form data here directly so use form will just handle that that for you and pass in the, the data from the the form so we no longer need to manage this piece of data ourselves. cool so we can remove all that um, and yeah we can actually also remove the on change function so now we've got essentially the exact same behavior but the state is managed using uh, use form so we can submit 
we've got the exact same. We can see the invalid as we type. We can just submit again, and we can see the um, the object. So that's we've moved the state over, uh, and now we're just going to move the validation over. Um, so we've got this validate function, um, which is here on submit. So right now, all we're really doing is we're validating. We're making sure it's required and that it has a min length of three. So we can actually take this entire um, yeah the statement here and or the expression, and we can add it to the register. Uh, function. So this takes in an object. Um, one of the keys is validate, right? And this just takes in a function with the value, essentially. And in this case, I'll call it yeah username, um, and it returns a boolean um, for whether it's valid or not. So simple as that. So that validate method basically replaces what we have here. So we can remove that, um, and the submit will only be called if basically all the validation. Um, all the validations that you put in are, are successful. So uh, we can remove this validate method and we can remove that. So it's only ever going to log this if um, what we have is valid, right? So submit here, you can see nothing's being logged. And if we do more than three, sorry. Yeah, you can see that's been logged. The final thing is the errors object, which we've obviously removes um, we can actually remove that completely because use form provides errors uh, which we can simply replace and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just log errors so we can have a look at that object but it looks very similar to what we just had um, so now if we submit we can see that that's that's working it takes the name um, and actually here we've got access to the type um, which is the type of validation that went wrong in this case it's a generic function so just validate you know, we can add different things to that. But what we can actually do is um, we can start to use the HTML elements that we looked at earlier on. So um, use form uh, supports all the standard HTML validation. So things like um, required, we can pop that in, true and min length, same with, you know, pattern, uh, max, etc. cetera. Um, they're all supported here. So we can do min length three. Um, and there we go. So we can see that the type here is required until we put something in, and you can see the type is mid length. So then we can do kind of logic based on that. Uh, and one other thing that you might have noticed is as soon as I've hit submit, if I'm on, for example, the age input and I've hit submit, it focuses on the um, the input that uh, needs validation. And then after I've hit submit for the first time, as I type, it's um, listening to the changes and updating um, based off of yeah, based off of what I'm typing, and that's basically quite a that's quite a powerful feature. And we have access to to manipulate the, the behavior of all these, um, and that's what we have in the options here. So we can do things such as you know um, uh, revalidate modes. So we can say actually only revalidate when I'm uh, yeah when I'm submitting. Uh, so I think it's on submit. So don't don't validate until I click submit again. So this one um, will. Uh, fail and it won't revalidate until I've submitted um, things like that and you can obviously do the uh, modes of form from the first time you know do you want to do on change on submit you've got stuff like uh, validate uh, criteria mode which is um, basically if more than one uh, validation is failing um, instead of seeing just the type in the object you'll see types so you can then you know start to build up your your error messages quite quite nicely. Um, so that's that's basically the what React Hook Form does. And one other thing that's worth mentioning is um, React Hook Form supports um, YUP, which is a schema validation uh, library. So if you um, install YUP uh, as a dependency, which I have done, so let's just do that, npm install uh, YUP. Cool, what you can do is something along the lines of uh, this. So you can set up a specific schema. So this schema is gonna have a username, it's a string, it's required, it's got some in three, and you can see how you can start to build this out. Um, and then in the options here, you can just um, you can just pass in the, the schema. So there we go. And basically that means you know you can remove all the, the registry. So you can see how although this is all um, kind of kept in line with the input, it could build up a fair bit depending on uh, the size of your form. So you could remove all these, simply keep the, the validation schema, and then as you submit, you can see you've got you got the exact same behavior and um, yeah I think these the errors object also actually 
keeps a, a message by default, which you can update, of course. So you can do something like that. Um, so I think it's got a message property and it will, yeah, it gives you kind of that out of the box, which you can update. So as you're typing in, it's changing. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, it's a very kind of minimal approach, uh, non-invasive, which I really like about it. So um, that's pretty much it. Hope you, hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.